Ah, there you are. Welcome back to another video on my channel. You're probably wondering who this sharp looking and crisp sounding guy is, huh? Well, it's still me. Don't worry, chap. I've tried to learn some Blender to make my videos pop out a bit more. And next to that, I've bought a sweet new microphone so you guys can finally enjoy my voice in a proper way. With all the amazing support that you guys have given me, I thought it was the least I could do to pay you back. We've already passed the 150 subscriber mark and that's absolutely crazy to me, so a big big thank you to all of you. Anyways, you're probably here for another boss guide, am I right? No problem. I can explain you a thing or two about Artio, another one of the new wilderness bosses. Right, let's get to it. Just keep on watching and I'll be sitting here, waiting until you're done. Nah, I'm not that lazy. I'll walk through the guide, let's go. So first off, we got the plugins again. This is basically the same as my spindle guide, so I advise you to use NPC indicator, tile indicator and the player indicator plugin. Be sure to put RTO in the NPC indicator text box and have highlight through tile enabled for both NPC indicator and tile indicator. Later in the guide you will see why this is very useful to freeze RTO. You can enable highlight others in the player indicator plugin to make it easier to spot PKers. For my gear I'm bringing a Bova with an imbued slayer helmet, since I always kill RTO on a slayer task. The Bova and crystal armor do not lose their charges when you die to a PKer, so as long as they are within your 3 or 4 most valuable items you do not run any risk of losing the crystal item or the charges. Barrel's gloves and the assembler are great for the range bonuses they give, but if you want to minimize your risk even further, you can replace these as well. Black fan braces are the best cheap alternative for the gloves, and for the assembler you can downgrade to another Ava's device, or just bring any cheap cape slot item with decent defensive or prayer bonuses. My inventory is pretty straightforward as well. Food and brews for healing, and blighted super restores for stat and prayer restoration. The blighted ones are significantly cheaper than the normal ones, and can only be used in the wilderness, so be sure to bring those. I bring two range spots for some extra DPS, a looting bag, a one-click teleport that works above level 20 wilderness, a stamina potion in case you need to outrun a PKer, and last but not least, a good amount of blighted ice sacks. This is the amount I'm risking with protect item enabled. Of this 100k risk, the barrel gloves are worth approximately 80k, so replacing those by fem braces reduces your risk quite a bit. The assembler costs 75k to repair, so you have to consider that a risk as well. Again, replacing the assembler is a good option in case you want to minimize your risk. As you can see, if I do not have protect item enabled, my risk increases to well over 1.2 mil. For this guide, the same principle applies as to my spindle guide. Prayer points are more important than health points. If you're not sure whether you can outlast the PKer and are running low on super restores, just die and keep your prayer above zero. Also, of course be sure to turn your PK skill prevention on to avoid getting skill tricked by other players. My total risk with all my supplies and protect prayer active is just above 350k. Assuming you will use a lot of your supplies before you die, this number is much higher than what you will lose if you have to die by the hands of a PKer. To get to Artio, we first teleport to the Ferox Enclave and make sure our gear and inventory is ready to go. Be sure you are on the ancient spellbook since we need to freeze Artio. Leave the Enclave through the northern exit and you should be able to see the cave right away. It's slightly to the northwest. You can peek inside the cave if you have 20 kill count to see if there are any other players inside. If you do not yet have the 20 kill count, you simply have to enter the cave and hope you run into an empty one. You can world up within the cave if you are quick enough and did not get hit by RTO, which teleports you right outside the cave again. I explain how you can search for an empty cave quickly in my spindle guide, which basically is the same for RTO. So if you want more information on that, I'll link that video in the top corner right now. If you find an empty cave, enter it and turn on your quick prayers, which are protect from missiles, rigor and preserve. The first thing you do is freeze RTO with the highest available freeze spell you have. Once he's frozen, you simply attack him with your bow and pay close attention to his attacks as well. The majority of his attacks are ranged attacks, which look like a white half circle flying towards you. Artyo makes a stomp animation with his left paw whenever he uses this attack. Occasionally, he will do a magic based attack as well. His whole body shifts backwards as he powers up his attacks, and he will shoot a white, comet shaped projectile your way. If he does this alternative attack, you have to quickly turn on your protect from magic prayer. The damage is calculated when the projectile hits you, so be sure you have a turn on when it's close to you and only turn back to protect from missiles after you see the hit splat of the magic attack. If you switch back too quickly, you will still get hit by his attack, which can deal up to 50 damage and knocks you back in the room. At around 60 and 30% of his health, Arteo will spawn red bear traps inside his cave. These traps will deal damage if you stand in them and will root you in place for a few seconds. They are easily avoidable since you can step over them as long as you have run enabled and move from one tile before the trap to one tile after the trap. Stepping over the traps make them disappear, so if you find yourself with little room to run around, you can step over a few traps to create some more space. Whenever Artyo summons his traps, he will always get unfrozen, no matter how recent you froze him last. If he gets unfrozen, he will constantly be moving towards the player, even if it doesn't appear this way, due to his animation locking him in place. This is why the NPC indicator plugin with True Tile enabled is very useful to turn on for this fight. 
if you see his blue true tile square move towards you, you know that RTO is not frozen yet, so you have to freeze him again. This also indicates if your freeze splashed and you have to cast a new one. If his true tile square is standing still, you know that you've successfully frozen RTO in place. As a general rule of thumb, you can get 6 to 7 Bova hits out before your freeze runs out. Of course, this does not apply if he summons his traps, which will unfreeze him regardless. I start my kills in the southeastern corner of the map, in order to lure RTO towards that corner and not have him run straight to the entire room. He spawns in the southwestern corner, so I turn on my quick prayers, select my freeze spell and hover over his spawn area with my mouse. When he spawns, I instantly freeze him and I can see that my freeze has landed based on his blue square not moving towards me. I switch to Mage Prayer when I see his magic attack and I count my Bova hits until he unfreezes and immediately refreeze him again, which I can see by keeping a close eye to his true tile square. After a few hits, I move towards the northeastern corner to create some distance between myself and Arteo, and once he unfreezes, I freeze him again and finish the kill. After the kill, I turn off my prayers but keep my preserve prayer on. If your freeze does not catch and he is close to you, be sure to run away before you cast another freeze, since his melee attacks can do some serious damage and hit you through protect from melee as well. That is basically the whole fight. Here is a quick summary. Have protect from missiles enabled for the majority of the fight. Freeze Arteo if his true tile square is moving. Switch to protect from magic when he does his magic attack and keep it turned on until it hits you. Avoid the traps, you can skip over them. And try to avoid his melee attacks. Arteo has some pretty decent normal drops. The main money makers are of course the uniques. The Dragon Pickaxe, which drops at the rate of 1 in 358, is worth slightly more than 2.5 mil. The Claws of Callisto are worth just above 6 mil, with a drop rate of 1 in 618. And the big money item is the Void Waker Hilt, bringing in close to 80 mil at a 1 in 912 drop rate. All the drops combined make the average RTO kill worth around 140k. But in the likely scenario that you do not get a unique drop, this number drops to around 35k. Supply drops make it easy to stay in the cave for a long period of time, but they do not drop often enough to make banking completely obsolete. I bank almost every time when I get a drop worth more than my initial risk of 100k, since it takes less than a minute to get back to the cave and store your valuable loot safely in the bank. Now what to do when someone tries to PK you? When I was recording all the footage for this video, the tick delay when entering the cave was not yet removed by Jagex, which meant I could almost 100% of the time teleport out when a PKer entered my cave. This has been made a bit more difficult now, but since large parts of the fight do not require you to click a lot, it's still a good option to hover above your one-click teleport to try and get away instantly. When you do get teleblocked, it is vital you turn on your Augury Prayer, since this boosts your magic defense by 25% and makes it a lot harder for PKers to freeze or entangle you. If you are frozen or entangled within the cave, try to keep an eye out for Arteo's magic attack and prioritize praying against that attack, since the knockback and potential 50 damage can be very deadly. After you get out of the cave, one escape option is to try and freeze the PKer yourself. But with very little magic boosting gear, this might not be the easiest. Running south is by far the best option, with the Ferox Enclave being a safe area if you manage to outlast the entire title block duration, or just running all the way to the Wilderness Ditch if you have the supplies to last that long. Another great way to escape was commented by GMUCR96 on my previous Spindle Guide. He suggested to bring a Chaos Talisman with you and enter the Chaos Altar, which is very close to Arteos Cave. Even if you are teleblocked, it is possible to enter the runecrafting altars, and once you are within the Chaos Altar, you can no longer be attacked by the PKer chasing you. Thanks a lot for this great tip, JMUCR. If you also have a tip to escape PKers that I haven't mentioned yet in my video, be sure to comment it down below. Of course, if you are a more skilled PKer yourself, you could always bring some anti-PK gear and face your opponent head on, but since I am dreadful at PKing, I cannot give any tips on that. Now onto the tips and tricks section. Whenever Arteo spawns his bear traps and gets him frozen, he seems to have a freeze immunity for at least the entire duration of his trap spawning animation, and one or two ticks after that as well. So be sure you don't recast your freeze spell straight away when he uses his special attack, but wait until a second or so after his animation finishes to guarantee a refreeze. If you have no space left in your inventory and you roll a food drop, be sure to eat up, fill your inventory and then leave the food drops on the floor. They are only worth about 1k each and take up a lot of place in your looting bag, and once they are in your looting bag you cannot take them out again. It's better to leave the food on the floor in case you take some extra damage during your next kill, or try to juggle a few food pieces around to maximize your time in the cave. Also, don't forget to close your looting bag before you pick up the food, else it will go straight to your looting bag anyways. Alright, that's all I got for you for today. I hope you enjoyed my new guide. I've put a lot of time and effort into it, so I would really appreciate if you could subscribe, hit that bell notification and press that like button as well. I've got a Calvarian guide coming up within the next week, and after that I'm working on a new series which I'm extremely excited about, and I'm sure you don't want to miss it. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys real soon.